All right, uh, let's talk about Lucas Reichel next. Uh, the follow-up to being a healthy scratch Sunday. He was back in the lineup, uh, albeit on the fourth line, uh, for both of these games uh, to start this four-game homestand. And um, how he's responded to that, uh, he was a minus one with one shot and two penalty minutes in 12-21 uh, on Tuesday against Nashville, and then one shot in 11-31 tonight. Um, I know he got his power play looks, especially during that uh, four-minute uh, penalty uh, in tonight's game. But, um, you know, what, what does Lucas Strike left do to climb back up this lineup here? Score goals. Is there anything else to do, though, with that limited ice time that he's getting right now in a fourth-line role? That's kind of where I'd point this. I agree. Goals. Here's here's the here's the it's sort of a chicken in the egg to me, Johnny, because Lucas Reichel is going to develop and and play his game more in a top six role right now on on this Blackhawks team. Maybe if if you're on a competing team, he might not even be in the NHL. He might be at this point, you know, yeah. sent back down to the AHL at this point to sort of work on, you know, scoring in top six minutes. Um, I think the Hawks are just hard pressed with the current situation that they're in to make as drastic of a move as that. But if you're going to scratch him and throw him on the fourth line, are you letting him develop as a goal scorer? He's already been moved around so much this season, right? We, we start the year as a center there's a lot of debate there. What do we want to do with them? He goes through his struggles. He gets his wake-up call. And now you're demoted down to the fourth line. Maybe it's not a huge deal in the grand scheme of things, but there's already been a lot of movement. Right. It's almost, you know, I, I hate to relate everything to baseball, Johnny, but, like, are you a starter or are you a reliever? Let's pick a role a little bit for him and focus on the development this year. I know the Hawks are focused on results. I know it sucks, but you've been the champion of like, let's temper expectations for a second. We're not going to the playoffs this season. Do you see a benefit for him playing on the fourth line and trying to earn yeah. his way back up outside of yeah, like, Hey, you need to earn it. I'll or uh, where do yeah, you stand on this? Yeah, I'll I'll take the um, side of I think this is Luke R Richardson's methodology um, because the healthy scratch is he's not the first player to receive this treatment. Remember earlier this year in that game? Andreas against had Vegas? Yes, right. I brought that up on Monday when Ron and I were discussing this in Lucas Reichel being a healthy scratch. And I said I would be watching his response to this um, it, over these this next home stretch of games because I figured he would be back in the lineup. Sure enough, he was. And and unfortunately, the outcome was that he was minus one and took a penalty um, in that game. But I think he was trying to do the right things. And you, I think I saw more of that assertiveness that left his game and led to him being a healthy scratch. If you go and look back at that road trip that just happened right before, obviously he did not play in the final game of it, but go and look at the Winnipeg game. Go and look at the Detroit game, even a game that he scored a power play goal, and he ends up being a minus two in that game. Um, I know he's minus one in this one, and plus minus is the end-all, be-all. However, he was in the position that the Hawks wanted him to be in, in terms of being a aggressive, you know, back checker and trying to generate a turnover, what have you. He's happened to get a stick up in the wrong area. That happens sometimes in hockey. So a uh, tough break for him on that front. So overall, I think I kind of like his response to this and, and I like the way that he's handled it because they've asked him about it and he, I think he's humble about it and he understands that he wasn't playing the game that the Blackhawks need him to play previously so I think working back towards that is a positive thing in his development overall and going back to one thing that you said in the grand scheme of things I think we'll just look at this as a blip on the radar as long as that scoring can come and follow when he does get his opportunities back on that line but in terms of the process of this we're not going to Stanley Cup this year. We're not going to playoffs. Shit, we're going for another lottery pick, right? I'm okay with, with this type of tough love, so to say, from Luke Richardson. And it's not the full-on torts, I'll bet you, for a full period, right? That, right. That's, 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 just, that's the way I look at it, and it's Luke Richardson's methodology of doing that. And it's sending the message, I think, and it'll take maybe a few more games for that to fully set in. 
But once one goes in the back of the net, as long as he maintains this level of drive that at least I've seen when, when he does get his limited minutes in the last couple of games, he'll be in a better position. Don't know if well, that think, means he'll yeah. be his long-term solution in an answer in a top six role, but he'll be on his way back towards earning those minutes. I'm of the mindset now after, after what you said that uh, the Luke Richardson methodology, and I think you put this very well, um, is at play here because originally my thought was why not throw him back up in the top six and try and get that going again, give him more opportunities to play with higher skilled players um, to, to fit his game. But now that you think about it, after what you said, he's had that opportunity already. You've got to earn that back. And I I like the fact now that, you know, like there's, there's a work in progress there. Does it mean that you skate harder on a four check? Do you try and take um, a chance to go into a corner and dig a puck out instead of heading back um, for a shift change or whatever the little plays are? Because I'm sure they're looking at little things that don't show up on the score sheet here. It's not just Lucas Reichel isn't on the score sheet for five or six games in a row. It's not just John Dietz's analysis that matters, right? Right. There's (laughs) there's little things that that the coaching staff and, and Luke Richardson are watching um, you know, versus how they're performing in practice and a lot of things that you don't see or even commentated on by the, you know, uh, wonderful broadcasting staff that we have here for the Chicago Blackhawks. So you can point these things out. We'll get to that in just a minute, but, um, you know, it, that that's, that's made it hard to evaluate things because right. I think if you really look at Lucas Reichel's game thus far, you hear a lot in the media right now about what's not going right. And you see the, the, the healthy scratch, you see him demoted to the fourth line. There's not a lot of explanation to the common hockey fan. What is like Lucas Reichel doing wrong outside of just not scoring a goal. So I think the easy thing for people to gravitate towards is why isn't he showing up on the score sheet? This might not even be that. It could be the whole process behind it of a lot of those other things. So you you remember back in school and now like the thing is that a certain way of teaching might not work best for a student given how they, you know, receive that teaching. They gave him the prop up at first that you're, you're you're great. And we're going to, you know, we we expect you to be a center and we're going to, you know, you're going to be a, you know, start the season at center, even though he played wing in the past years and Kyle Davidson gave him the, the whole, you know, fluff up before the season that didn't work. You saw the drop in the score. Yep. Now we're going to the Luke Richardson school of tough love here. So I think this one will hopefully drive better results. 